going on everyone? True Techno Gamer here and this is post PS5 reveal event. I'm going to talk about my impressions, what I actually took away from it, and what I hope you guys take away from it. Um, but let's just get right into it man. Now first of all yeah if you're watching the channel please like, comment, let me know what you thought. If you saw the conference I'll put a link to it as well uh, if you haven't seen it. Um, but if you haven't seen it, check it out. If you're a fan of gaming, period, this isn't about Sony versus Microsoft. Just check it out. It was extremely well done. So my overall impressions, needless to say, I feel like Sony knocked it out the park. I was really, really excited as I was watching it. There were several moments where I really got like that childlike giddiness again. Um, and I actually clapped in some moments as well. I just thought that, um, you know, they showed almost 30 games in the course of an hour. Um, these are full PS5 games. Everything that they showed was captured on the PS5, which means that it was running in real time and it was, if not gameplay, using an engine assets. In real time though. Um, but they showed a lot of gameplay, what was clearly gameplay. Um, and and that, was, that was cool. So there's a couple of things that a lot of people, I mean, everyone has, got, has their opinions, there's a lot of people already talking about it, but there's a couple things that people haven't really highlighted that I'm gonna make sure to highlight here. But my overall impressions, I was super, super excited. And I just felt like if you look at the presentation, uh, it felt very professional. It felt like an E3 press conference, which is you know something that we haven't gotten from Sony in two years now, right? And especially now in the midst of this, um, you know, this whole global situation right now, Everyone is, is just kind of pent, in, pent up in their homes and, you know, we were just hungry for something, uh, for a, a diversion, something, you know, that we can just enjoy and, and kind of lose ourselves in. And I just thought that it was, it was great. And considering that, you know, Sony has been so quiet uh, about PS5 in the grand scheme of things, um, and we haven't really gotten anything official from PS5 uh, in terms of the actual system and definitely nothing on games at all. This was the first, you know, unveil for games. So they had a lot of, uh, I think, a lot to live up to, and um, a lot of uh, pressure in, in effect, right? Um, it, you know, you don't, you can't make another first impression, right? So I just felt like the pacing was so great, and then the games they showed was so diverse. It was something there for everyone. Um, there was some great technical, um, ex, you know. Um, <clears throat> some great technical displays that really show what next gen could be about. And then there were just some purely great games, some, you know, great artistic uh, visions that were being uh, realized here. So with that said, there's a couple things I want to I point out. First of all, like I said, remember, we have not gotten <clears throat> a presentation like this from Sony in over two, almost two years now. Remember, Sony skipped out last year's E3. They didn't do like a full-on press conference for Gamescom or anything. They haven't done a PlayStation meeting. They haven't done a PlayStation experience uh, or destination PlayStation or no PlayStation experience that they usually do in December. Last year, I, they, they just canceled pretty much every major event where they would do like a press conference or have like a real display of games um, in pretty much all of 2019. And they had already dropped out of E3 this year and PAX and GDC was canceled right, because of the, the whole global um, pandemic, right? So we haven't gotten this from Sony in a while. And the last time we did in E3 2018 was one of their weirdest uh, and probably the least favorable um, in terms of its reception, right? Uh, press conferences that they had, E3 press conferences that they've had in a long time. Uh, it wasn't a great, it wasn't a great year for Sony in that regard. Um, so, you know, it was like, well, what are we going to get? Are we going to get Sony of old? I felt like the 2013 PS4 meeting, um, PlayStation meeting where they first showed the PS4 was, was also really, really well done. Uh, it was a lot of filler and a lot of more talking, um, but we did get to see some great looking games. We did get to see actual gameplay. We did get to kind of get really some real insight into what the PS4 was going to allow developers to do, that kind of thing. So I thought that was really well done, but looking back at it, uh, it was still great, but it, it definitely hit was flawed. You know, it definitely had some flaws. 
I felt like, you know, coming after that two year gap, man, it, this was like Sony at their best. It really was. And it's a stark contrast to Microsoft's general presentation style, right? It was just, uh, it was just a lot more of a, of a presentation, a lot more bells and whistles, right? All of the graphics and the transitions, the, the sound and music, you know, uh, and, and they were clear about sticking to the games, which was great. So that's one thing. The second thing I want to point out um, that I, I tried to get this across on some several forums, but this is important. In the last year since Sony released the Wired article, and um, really not much else, and Microsoft talked about you know the Xbox Series X and their next gen plans, there have been nothing but absolutely obnoxious grading spec talk. Uh, specifically focusing on resolution and frame rate. More so resolution, that's annoying to me. You know, if you go in the forums and just talking, to, like there was nothing to talk about except and teraflops. Teraflops, number of P's, right, in the resolution and frame rates, and this system is more powerful. With, with no games, no one played any, <laughs> any of these systems. It's just about the teraflops. 12 in Xbox versus 10 in PlayStation. Xbox is stronger, PlayStation is weaker, PlayStation can't do 4K, and, 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 you know, absolutely great. Now, part of it is just because there was nothing else to talk about. There wasn't any games, the, the systems were still vaporware for all, all of the intents and purposes for a while. That's not the case anymore. But in the meantime, yes, all of this talk, and the bottom line is, as I have said numerous times, and I've said it in these forums and no one still wants to listen. Teraflops, theoretical computing power of just the GPU, one component in the entire system, does not a next gen experience make. In other words, there's a lot more to the system and to the next gen experience than just the GPU and just a theoretical number. That really doesn't mean anything in terms of tangible benefits, right? Um, and what was beautiful about this presentation is that you watched it for over an hour and saw 27 or so games and not a single mention of teraflops or P's or 4K or 60 frames per second or anything of the sort. It was just purely here is the games. And these games looked pretty far along. These games looked like they can ship by the end of this year. They can ship at launch for the most part. Um, so, you know, these were pretty fleshed out games in most cases, the first time, you know, the public is ever getting them. So we can't really feel and get a sense of what the next gen uh, difference is gonna be from a video stream, guys. You know, like a lot of the benefits for, the, for both consoles, really the Xbox um, Series X and PlayStation 5 has to do with the speed and immediacy and the responsiveness of playing the game. Right, and we can't do that without getting our hands on the controller and playing the game, right? So we're not gonna get a chance to see that. A lot of uh, the difference with the PlayStation 5 is with the DualSense controller. Everyone is talking about that, to have the feedback um, and what that's able to bring and, and just the general like ergonomics and the speaker and the microphone and the triggers, right? And stuff like that. Well, again, we won't be able to feel that, right? No one has really felt it outside of Sony. <laughs> and I've asked obviously some key developers right now. You know, Microsoft has just been guilty, honestly, of just completely perpetuating that. I mean, ever since the Xbox One X, right, it's the most powerful console, six teraflops, blah, 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 blah. So now with the Xbox Series X, it's 12 teraflops, the most powerful console, blah, 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 blah. And, you know, it's just perpetuating it, but those numbers don't mean anything. Like I said, when you're actually sitting down in front of your TV or monitor, playing the video game. You're not gonna be sitting there, controlling in hand, going through this experience thinking, man, I wish I had 18% more compute power right now on my GPU. <laughs> You're not gonna be doing that, right? You're gonna be getting a lot more benefit from the 3D audio. You're gonna be getting a lot more benefit from the better ergonomics of the controller, the more responsiveness in the controller. You're gonna be getting better um, much more out of the haptic feedback and the, and the, right, and adaptive triggers in the PS5 case. You're gonna be getting a lot more feedback from just the instant um, you know, load times and the instant responsiveness and the quick resume feature in the Series X. 
that's what you're going to be feeling and saying when you play Spider-Man on the PS4 controller versus Spider-Man on the PS5 and feeling the web and feeling different types of suits and you know stuff like that that is more meaningful that's the next gen guys you don't play a teraflop man. you you know you play a game so at the end of the day if no one told you how many teraflops was in these systems who cares right if it's smooth and it's a good game that's that's all that matters so absolute kudos to sony if anyone i don't know if anyone ever from sony or any of the sony devs here this Kudos to Sony, I really appreciate that. And, and that cannot be understated. I'm so tired of hearing about peas and teraflops and whatever. So other than that, man, um, I just again it was just it was just great to see so many games. I'm not gonna go rehash all the games, but the ones that stuck out to me, it's really cool that obviously they're gonna have a Spider-Man game at or near launch. Um, that's gonna be big. And you know, they, I'm sure they're working on a full Spider-Man 2. This is not Spider-Man 2, this is Spider-Man Miles Morales. It sounds like it's something more in line with what Uncharted Lost Legacy was uh, until Uncharted 4. So it's kind of like, you know, built within the same framework of the game. It's not a full, you know, revamp of the game and the gameplay. It's kind of like an expanded standalone DLC, but probably a little bigger than the DLC, right? So it doesn't, I mean, it's still cool. Spider-Man was great. The gameplay is great. And it's one of the games that can benefit the most from the PS5 technology, from the SSD, with loading um and not just loading but you know the speed at which spider-man moves and fast travel and stuff like that i think spider-man 2 is really really going to show a lot because that ssd can fundamentally change that whole game and how they create that city and stuff like that but this is not this is going to be more of a half step um but it's going to look great i'm sure it's going to you know up the ante run at 4k uh, i don't know about 30 or 60 that's kind of more up to them it could run at 60 i'm sure but you know they'll they, they decide but it'll look sharper, it'll look cleaner, uh, it'll run a lot faster and feel a lot smoother and you know, and it's fine. Man. So that's cool. Um, one of the biggest standoffs, of course, to me was Ratchet and Clank, uh, a rift apart. So Ratchet and Clank is just, uh, you know, I'm glad that Sony sticks with it because it's, it's, there's no other game out there like it now, pretty much, especially big games. And um, you know, it's always one of the best, like, technical games and just purest gameplay games and it's insomniac at their final so um Rack this this game you know was the standout technical showpiece for ps5 for various reasons first of all the graphics themselves also looked absolutely amazing and it really did look like a cg movie everything we saw was real time from ps5 even the cutscene parts um, and it looked like a CG movie. We said that before. We said that when the PS4 one came out. We said it when it got upgraded to the PS4 Pro. And uh, it, it this one just looks way better. You can just, that scene in the beginning when, you know, he first takes off and he's riding on that, that animal before he gets to the first riff. Um, and just the lighting and get just the clarity and the image quality, the texture detail. It, it's, it's ridiculous, man. And it's, it's a launch title or near launch title. Um, it looks great, but then of course the the rift, you know, dimensions that you see Ratchet going through these dimensional rifts and literally going into completely different worlds that are being loaded within two to three seconds. Now people are kind of debating about this because some people are just saying, "Oh, it's instantaneous," and others are like, "No, they're hiding a load when the screen when when he's falling and the screen kind of goes purple." Yes, it is loading for two or three seconds. That's the whole point. The math works out, by the way, right? If if the PS5 SSD raw is about 5.5 gigabytes per second, um, and it has 16 gigs of memory, and granted, you know, the game is obviously not using all 16. Some of it's probably reserved for the, oper for the operating system and whatnot. So whatever it is, it's probably like around 14 that it, the game needs to use. Well, you know, five and a half into 14 is over two seconds right it's close to three seconds so the math works out perfectly if you you can fill up the entire ram on the ps5 in, a, in less than three seconds that's what we knew theoretically going in and what we saw is exactly that if you watch the video for Rash and the clinic and watch him go through those dimensional rifts i i literally did i found it it took two to three seconds some cases closer to two some cases closer to three but it happened so fast in the flow of the game that no way did it feel like a, a load 
I mean, you wouldn't have time to put down the controller, right? I mean, you, <laughs> where he's running through, he's screaming, and it's just like a, it's like a transitional screen, and you're in this whole other world. We're not talking about loading just the texture or loading just the models. They loaded the entire world, the entire simulation, all of the graphics, everything that's happening in the scene is loaded right there. You can jump right in, back into gameplay in three seconds. That is amazing. I don't care. Like people acting like. It's not like you know less than a second it's not they're filling they're, they're loading the entire world no low screen no nothing that's next gen that's what the ps5 and xbox couldn't do it that fast it couldn't um so that was a cool way to demonstrate this is what and again this game isn't done i mean they can optimize it further they can make it faster um even faster than it is um, but yeah, I think that's perfect. I mean, within the flow of the game, it, it works out fine. So we saw that and we saw the mechanic where he kind of like throws this tether and he kind of like warps into another part of the level, right? And, and again, that's definitely using SSD. That's pretty ins instantaneous. He's literally just grabbing it, warping, and like the entire uh, area of the level around him just is there, ready to go, appears. Um, so that's that SSD in effect as well. So no, man, I mean, actually, you know, I cannot wait. That's probably right now my most anticipated PS5 game. It looks amazing, uses um, the technology to great. And then Ratchet and Clank, you know, with all of those weapons, and you know, Sony had mentioned this. Again, I, we don't know exactly what those haptic, you know, uh, motors feel like, what the haptic feedback feels like in the controller, but God knows that Ratchet and Clank is probably a great, uh, game for that right with all of those different uh, weapons and all of the different effects that the weapons do you can actually feel and articulate the different you know like literally to each individual weapon that you know just from feel close your eyes and you know what weapon you're using you know you know what enemy you hit with it and these kind of things like that's the level of what they're talking about with the haptic feedback in the controller and that level of precision and accuracy um, that would be cool. That would be cool. So, in so many ways, in 3D audio, you know, with the weapons and just all this stuff going on, you can clearly see ray tracing uh, is used in the level as well. Um, on a clank, it looks amazing, like super shiny and reflecting stuff. And then in, in certain parts where you look at the floor and it's reflecting so much around it. Um, ray tracing, yeah. If You know, Ratchet and the Clank, remember, the last two Ratchet and Clank games uh, ran at 60 frames, so... I was sure I would fully expect that the 60 is the target at least, um, but we'll see. We'll see how that goes. I, I think that they, they should be able to hit 60 even with ray tracing and, and everything, and that would be an amazing feat uh, for a game to look like that and run at native 4K, 60 frames per second with ray tracing, and you know leveraging the SSD and the controller and all that stuff. Great game. So that's my most anticipated game. Uh, other games, um, real quick. Uh, GT7. You know, it's funny how. <laughs> People are so jaded nowadays that there was a time where, you know, a full-on GT game, you know, would have been like a huge deal. And granted, GT has kind of fallen off a bit, but um, people have been asking and talking about GT7 for years now. Ever since GT Sport, people thought GT Sport was kind of like just a spin-off. They showed GT7, right? And, and you know, the crazy thing about it is they didn't just show GT7, like they actually show an extended gameplay clip. Because here's the thing, right? In the past, whenever they show GT, they always show like the replay camera or like the kind of intro cinematic type of thing, which is they say, you know, it looks a lot better than the actual gameplay, right? When you're in the cockpit or in, you know, racing the car, you know, that has a certain look and then the, the replay mode and all the cinematics have a different kind of look. Look at what they did here, man. Like they showed, you know, kind of like the intro thing. They showed cinematics. And then they jump right into an actual gameplay section in the car, in the cockpit, menus and, and, and GUI overlay. They even showed, by the way, they, they even showed the menu, the main menu of the game. And, and they're going to show, like, hey, this is not GT Sport. And, it, you know, you saw things like the car tuning, which wasn't part of GT Sport, and, you know, other aspects that just wasn't there. And it's like, this is a full on GT again. That's what they were trying to show. Uh, so kudos, I mean, you know, they haven't really done that like that before, man, you know, we always come away like, yeah, that's just a replay graphics, so, yeah, that's just the gameplay. They show, look, Trial Mountain is back, that's a GT staple, you know, um, and here are some extended gameplay. Now, granted, it was, especially with the stream, now, the one weakness of the stream was that it, it was only 1080p, 30 frames per second, which is weird. Most of these games, obviously, are running at 4K, 60, and you can't get that. 
from the stream. In fact, watching the stream, you couldn't appreciate a lot of the graphics in these games. And GC, to me, was one of the biggest ones that suffered from it. Because at the time, you're like, that looks pretty close to like GC Sport, <laughs> right? I mean, if someone told you, well, here's like a GC Sport update coming to PS4 Pro, you might have been like, for the, I mean, there's some parts of it, the ray tracing, you know, but you might have been like, okay, I get that. But when you see the full 4K video of the trailer, you're like, okay, yeah, this is definitely above what I'm, I have PS4 Pro and, and GC Sport, and um, this is definitely above that, right? Um, so I'm excited about it. Um, you know, I, 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 you know, every time GT comes out, I hope, and I, I like GT. I still play, I, I play GT Sport still to this day. I think it's a cool game. Uh, I love the accuracy, attention to detail and stuff like that and all the kind of cars we can use and all those things. I just feel like, um, yeah, Forza has kind of like leapfrog GT in a lot of ways. Uh, and just from a gameplay perspective and just kind of from my spectacle perspective, if that makes sense, um, GT has a ways to go, right? Dynamic weather, dynamic time of day, and, and car you know, damage modeling. GT is, is more about the driving experience less so about the racing experience right and force is about the racing experience more so and that's really what it comes down to you know gt is about you know making sure that you can drive a, a car and have it feel as realistic as possible and it just happens to be racing on top of that right so we'll see how they go i want to see this gt do some things differently and that's one thing about gt sports that i embrace that gt sport did do things differently uh, it kind of broke a lot of mold for, for Gran Turismo, so but that was cool. Either way, still a big game. It's going to be a multi-million seller. It, and, it, you know, the fact that they can show gameplay to that level, it looks like it's pretty complete. Most of the time, we have to wait three years or so, three, four years, um, before we see a, a full GT in a new generation PlayStation. So this game looks like it's probably, you know, a year. It'll probably be out fall 2021, I would, I would think. You know, it, it might be a year, year and a half out tops. You know, so that's cool. That was interesting to see. Uh, it looked good. Um, other than that, yeah, the, the Square Enix game that everyone I'm sure thought was Final Fantasy 16 uh, also looked really, really good. Um, Project Athea. Uh, it, it looked like the UE demo, uh, <laughs> UE5 demo in a way, um, but the graphics looked really, I think that probably was like the best, well, Ratchet and you know up there too, but they're probably like the best looking game from a, just a pure visual standpoint um, Bridge of Spirits looked really really good really really charming the graphics look great apparently that game is coming out the PS4 as well um, But clearly the PS5 version is gonna look uh, a step above even if it's just resolution or just detail level and stuff like that um, But that game looked really good. It was really cool to see another odd odd world game um you know, we hadn't really seen Outworld in a long time, and it is funny because Outworld was like one of those first uh, games on PS1 um, that that kind of stood out, you know. Um, I remember that. I remember seeing that, like, what is this? But it had a look and a feel to it that was different, clearly, right? So it's cool seeing that back. Um, you know, we'll see that, um, how that turns out. Um, Outworld Soulstorm, the game. Um, so that was cool. Hitman 3 was interesting to see. Uh, I haven't really got into the Hitman games like that, but uh, I've, I've played pieces of them and definitely seen them in my work and stuff, but Hitman 2 especially. Um, so I'm curious about that one. Uh, there's a lot of things that, again, that they can use for next, next, next gen I think will be beneficial. And the scene they're showing in, in Dubai is also pretty cool. Um, but that was like nice to show at the PlayStation event and, um, you know, I thought that was a pretty cool one, so look out for that one for sure. Of course, Demon Souls, uh, which has been heavily rumored, and it almost was like a foregone conclusion, but it was good to get the confirmation. And again, if you look at that trailer and keep in mind that what you're seeing is real time, captured for directly from the system, because it looks like a, it's like a cinematic. So at first glance, especially when you when I watched it on the stream, you wanted to just just dismiss it and be like, yeah, right. I mean, here we go again. You know, and you're kind of waiting for the gameplay segments. But when you see the 4K stream, again, you see that it is, it's, it's real time. I mean, you can tell because pre-rendered has like a, um, a look to it, right? It, it, a look of perfection in some ways, right? Um, real time does not have, right? So you can see some of the artifact thing or just some of the things that just don't look quite perfect that makes it real time. If you see the 4K stream, you see what I mean? But that, not to say it doesn't look amazing, that's the whole thing. It looks freaking ridiculous, right? Especially for a Souls game. 
that's a great, great exclusive for Sony to have in your corner. And it sounds like that it's actually going to be a launch title. And if it is, people are already saying, like, if you, and they're going to have more games. They're going to have way more games, right? But if you have Demon Souls and Spider Man, just those two games even at launch, you're in a pretty good situation if you're something, right? Um, so we'll see, man, but that looked cool. And of course, Horizon. Um, you know, when I first saw it on the stream, it was kind of interesting because, again, I thought it was a cinematic, uh, pre rendered cinematic type of thing. And, that, and again, when I say, like, in engine, you can have an in engine cinematic. That's what Naughty Dog does a lot with Uncharted. Uh, like, Uncharted 4 and even Last of Us 2, when, you, when they go into cinematics, you know, they just up. Because they know that scene, they're crafting the scene, they know what it is, it's fixed. So they can up some of the asset detail, they can up, you know, some of the resolution of like certain effects and stuff like that. It's still an engine, it's still in the game engine, um, but they can up some things. And that's usually why you see like cinematics run at 30 frames per second, even when the gameplay is 60 frames a lot of times, right? Because it is using high quality assets. So that's the general takeaway. Like everything on PS5 look like the cinematics on PS4. <laughs> right, which is again, like, it's not necessarily night and day, but it's just an extra level of fidelity and polish um, that you're just like, yeah, but that's not real, right? And and you looked at everything here, and, you, and there were many times where you're like, yeah, that's not, that's just a cinematic, right? It's not real, but you're like, oh, you can play this, <laughs> you know, like it actually looked real. Um, so again, Horizon was one of those games that was like, yeah, that's just cinematic, you know, whatever. Obviously, it wasn't quite gameplay yet. But when you saw the 4K stream, again, immediately, I was like, oh crap, this is real. Because I can, you can see the the imperfection in, in the stream, in the video, in the rendering. And it's like, again, this isn't perfect, right? But it looks darn good. The world and the, it was, it's, it looked amazing. So yeah, when you look at it, it's like, wow, this is real? Like the underwater scene? And then when you start seeing the screenshot, the 4K screenshots of, of Aloy and her character model on the water, it was like, yo, well, this is crazy. Uh, and again, there's a lot more to show of, of, of Horizon. Um, I think when they do show gameplay and they do show the world and lighting and the, I mean, I think it's gonna blow people's breath away. I don't expect Horizon any time before the fall of 2021. Uh, it looked like, you know, it's coming along and it looks pretty, pretty good and pretty complete. Um, but Horizon is a game that's going to be, I think it's going to be a 2021 title. Um, I think fall, but it might even be a little earlier. Um, possibly gets pushed to early 2022, but I think it'll be a 2021 title. Um, and, and that's going to be huge, of course. Um, so, so yeah, man, I mean, you know, look, you know, and then of course, okay, of course the system is up. There were other games that were shown. I didn't go into everything. I just, the highlights that caught my eye. Um, it was cool, by the way, to see that there were some third party exclusives coming. The PlayStation uh, 2 from Bethesda um, and in Ghostwire Tokyo and Deathloop, both of which seemed really cool. Um, and and then um, the Project uh, Athea from Square. We saw Resident Evil 8. Oh, I could forget that. I didn't know what that was when I was watching it. I really didn't. Um, and I heard about a little bit about the rumors of Resident Evil 8, but I just didn't. I don't know. I just caught me on guard. I was like, what is this? And I, to the very end, I was like, oh crap, Resident Evil 8. Uh, and I, you know, I have to go back and rewatch that. Um, the interesting thing about that game is that that's not cross-gen. That game is coming only to PS5, Series X, and PC. So they 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 have the platform to make that full on next gen. And when you look at the trailer, you know it doesn't look that much beyond Resident Evil 7 or something, right? Uh, or they're even the remakes. Until you look at some of those indoor scenes, man. Look at those the scenes that they showed of the house or the castle, whatever that was. And it's full on ray, ray tracing going on in there. You look that chandelier, look amazing, and just the general, um, you know, detail inside looked really amazing in general. So, again, it's Capcom. And the RE engine looks great. I'm curious. Um, I don't know a lot about it. I don't really have much expectation for it. Um, people are saying, which it does, it looks like kind of like a harken back to like Resident Evil 4 and, and like 1 in a lot of ways, which is. Really, really interesting, really, really cool. Resident Evil 4 is considered the best in the series and one of the best action games ever, so that would be promising. Um, so keep my eye on it, you know. Um, they said that they're going out for a full-on next-gen horror experience, so we'll see what that means. Um, so yeah, besides that, uh, the look of the system, 
and you know, I clapped. This is the part where I just stopped and clapped, man, because I kind of felt like from the beginning, we, we saw like all these weird shapes and all the PlayStation symbols, and I was, and you know, we saw it like through every transition, and I was just like, wouldn't it be interesting, wouldn't it be cool if Sony is kind of just building up to, the, to actually showing the system? I wasn't sure what was going to happen, but I, I did say that, like, early on in the stream, like, yeah, I, I, that, I think that would be awesome if they do that. And it wasn't until, like, the end, you know, that last scene with all of the little balls, I was like, are they doing it? Like, they're doing it. And, you know, I was kind of like, what is this thing going to be? I kind of knew it was going to be black and white. We, everyone knew that. I knew it was going to look futuristic, and I knew it was going to kind of be an out there design. Um, I didn't think it was going to be quite as big as it is. It is pretty big. Um, it looked like it's actually pretty bigger, pretty much bigger than the Series X and uh, obviously the One X and even the PS4 Pro and all of that stuff. Um, but I love it, man. I love the design. I, I just want something that looks like something. You know, I always want that in my technology. I want that in my game console. Somebody, to, people come in and be like, what is that? Oh, you got that new thing? Or oh, man, like, you know, it just looks like something that should be there in a your high-end entertainment setup and you know that they can run some state-of-the-art stuff right um and in a lot of ways i think it makes a bigger statement than any playstation before and that's cool and i definitely think it looks better than the series i just don't like that series x i don't know rectangular prism thing I, it just looks boring <laughs> Uh, it just looks weird. I don't. I just I'm not feeling it. I don't get it. So at least this looks like something, and I, I personally love it so far. Again, I, you know, you got to see it in person to, you know, to really, really judge it. Um, just in the pictures, the screenshots, the videos. I would say thumbs up. I would say, you know, it looks like something. It is large. Uh, has plenty of ventilation. Um, I'm just glad it's out, man. Like I said in my pre pre show thing, right? I just. Make the system real. Now the PS5 is real, right? It's real. Every time you look somewhere, um, look on the Sony PlayStation site, look at the PlayStation blog, look at IGN, whatever. If they reference PS5, they can show a picture of the actual system now. It's a real thing, you know? So that's awesome. Um, kudos to Sony. Again, masterful job over all the presentation. I mean, literally, there's nothing more that I can really ask for. Like, I don't even know what else, what I could complain about. Uh, a lot of people are just saying like they wanted this, like they're basing it on their own, in some cases, misguided expectations and just extreme expectations. Look, they show 27 games of all kinds of diversity, AAA, indie, um, platformers, racing, action, you know, um, superhero, I mean everything, across the board, horror. Right, they just there was something there for everyone. It just it's, it's what we always feel when we watch PlayStation press conferences that you know they just have such a diverse uh, lineup of games, right? And they still have great partners. They still have exclusive deals. Um, so it just it just really you know instill confidence in what somebody's doing. Uh, it definitely made me feel like I can't you know I want a PS5. Uh, and it, you know it like a lot of people saying it kind of leapfrog. Uh, whatever momentum Xbox had had up to that point because everything that Xbox talked about for the most part It wasn't about the game other than like okay backwards compatibility But in terms of like, you know any new games, there wasn't a whole lot there We already know of some games obviously we saw Gears 5, you know update and you know Halo Infinite is coming those are some big ones Hellblade, you know, but um, Microsoft is going to show their event in July. They have a lot to show and hopefully, you know, they have a good show. They show some really cool looking games with a, a great presentation. And that, you know, we're able to talk back and, you know, they swing back the momentum. That's what we want. We want them to kind of be fighting and kind of competing with each other, right? So that we're going to win uh, as a game as, as a result of that. So, anyway, uh, I was a lot, you know, immediately afterwards, I was a lot more giddy about everything. I, I let some days pass to cool. And I still was just like, you know what? There's nothing to complain about. I just thought it was a masterful presentation so kudos sony uh, great job i can't wait for ps5 i can't wait to learn more this is just the start as they have said they're going to be more game reveals and, and insights now to cast out the bag so I, all the third party publishers can talk about their ps5 games and um yeah nba 2k well, you know they didn't show gameplay but they at least showed that um they're treating next gen like next gen because nba 2k is looking pretty crappy now honestly um, and you know, I was hoping, wondering now, they're just gonna kind of 
take the same framework, just you know, and just up up res it to 4K 60, which is kind of weird because it already runs at 4K 60 on the enhanced consoles. Or are they really going to go and really try to do something from the ground up new for next gen? It looks like that's what they're trying to do. Um, I think when we see the actual gameplay, it's going to wind up looking pretty similar. But they got to fix the animation and just fix the characters. But most of the characters are going to look like just weird, I don't know, lifeless zombies. <laughs> so uh, the Zion model looked awesome, looked super real, um, way beyond what we see on, on current gen. So. I'm optimistic about that. Unlike Madden, the Madden show showing at the uh, Xbox event just looked like Madden that we already seen. Like I, you know, we couldn't even tell the difference from what they showed. So yeah, but anyway, kudos to Sony, great job. Check it out if you haven't seen it. If you made it this far, thank you. Like, subscribe, please write comments. Can't wait for next gen. It is real, it is here, PS5 and Series X. Great time to be a gamer. See you soon.